I'm joined by Conservative commentator Benedict Spence. Why do they always call you a Conservative commentator? I think it's just the blue suit. I don't, I'm going to call you a commentator <laughs> to give you more of a wide range of... Yes. I can talk on other subjects. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Not many, um, but... Now, uh, well, let's talk about Israel. I mean, uh, we've been hearing now for days. It's coming, it's coming. Mm. The next stage is about to happen. Get prepared to die and all that from Netanyahu. A lot of tough talk, uh, mm. and I'm certain tough action is going to happen very, very soon. Uh, now, at the weekend, apparently, uh, we've got about 400,000 Israeli troops all amassed on the various borders of the Gaza Strip. At the weekend, we're told they were going to go in, but for some reason, bad weather stopped that, something mm. about air cover. Uh, but now he is saying uh, very, very soon they will attack by uh, land, sea and air. Mm. Uh, when would you predict that might happen? Next couple of days? I Today, mean, maybe? Honestly, it might be any time. This is going to be the key thing, is that the Israelis aren't going to want to, to obviously let it be known exactly when it's going to happen to give sort of Hamas the optimum opportunity to prepare. But they do also, I think, want to give civilians as much time as they can to get out of uh, there because... I mean, for a number of reasons. I mean, for a start, the second that uh, Palestinian civilians start getting caught in the crossfire, international outcry will ratchet up and, you know, mm. everybody will start demanding ceasefires. There'll be calls for boycotts of Israel, uh, what have you. Uh, but there's also a practical aspect to this, which is that civilians in what is a very narrow strip of land, a very tightly compacted... Uh, they get in the way of military operations. If you have soldiers going into Gaza, they're not going to be shooting at civilians. They're going to be trying to avoid them at all costs. So you want as few of them to be there as possible because if they start getting in the way, that bogs down your soldiers. It means that you have other things to worry about beyond just Hamas. And Hamas, make no mistake about this, they will understand the lay of the land a lot better than the Israelis. They will use every opportunity to bog down the IDF as it moves forward. So there is that... Uh, desire, I think, to get as many civilians out of the area as possible. And I know that there is a lot of blood and thunder sort of rhetoric coming from Netanyahu, but they don't want to be butchers of ordinary people. They don't want to be seen to be butchers, but make, make no mistake about it, it will come certainly within, I think, the next two to three days. Um, things like air cover, these are very important things to sort of take into account. There is the other aspect to it, though, which is the logistics of the IDF itself. 400,000 soldiers is a lot of soldiers. You know, they, in terms of getting all of these people in there, you want it to be very organised because it's very easy for sort of chaos to break out if they go in and a portion are trapped and they're routed and they're pushed back and then you have soldiers coming in from behind. That can create serious logistical bottlenecks that the IDF will have to work very hard to avoid essentially sending its soldiers into a meat grinder. Well, we're looking at the live pictures of the Rafa border between the Gaza Strip and Egypt. Egypt isn't allowing anyone out of the Gaza Strip into Egypt. Uh, what, why would it be that Egypt doesn't want to help its uh, <laughs> Muslim brothers in their uh, hour of need? The first thing that the Egyptians would say is that it is the Palestinians' land and that they shouldn't be forced from their land and that they don't want to encourage yeah, right. these... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. They don't want to encourage the Israelis to think that they can Basically, get away with translation, cleansing. we don't want them. We don't want to... Two million hungry mouths to feed is basically what it is. And you can you can understand why nobody yeah, wants it, that. Yeah. Um, but also, Egypt has a difficult relationship with Hamas. Hamas is an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Sinai Peninsula is home to uh, an insurgency that is being committed by the Muslim Brotherhood against the, uh, the government of Egypt. So there is also that. If you let all of these people through, that is not to say that they will all be civilians. We know that it's not all going to be civilians. There will be militants who try to get through as part of that, if nothing else, to cause discord, to cause chaos, to try to create issues, um, possibly to try and tempt... Uh, the, the the Egyptians to get involved in a different way into the conflict. So you can entirely understand from Egypt's security situation, you don't want two million undocumented people flooding over the border. That's chaos. Indeed. Now, a lot of calls from various world leaders, including our uh, Foreign Secretary James Cleverly, uh, for Netanyahu and Israel to show restraint when mm. they finally do go in, when they invade. Uh, which is fair enough, but what occurs to me is, you know, they do have to avenge what happened yeah. last weekend. Mm. They're atrocities, mm. you know, babies being beheaded, grandmothers being raped, mm. 260 kids at a pop concert, God, chopped down in a hail of bullets. Israel, it's, this isn't just about asserting Israel's authority. It is about avenging the atrocities that were visited upon Israeli people. Yeah. Uh, so make no mistake, uh, Netanyahu is going to make want this to look visual, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think we... Uh, 
I'm not trying to sort of give Israel an out or give them preferential treatment, but it does often seem that there is a different set of rules applied to Israel. Any other country in this situation would not have quite the same cascade of countries saying, no, you must show restraint, you can't do this, that, and the other. I think we ourselves forget, we like to think that we've moved on, but take the example of the Second World War. I know we always come back to it in this country, but actually, what did we do to the Nazis? What did we do to Germany? Did we avoid civilians? No, we firebombed Dresden, we firebombed Hamburg. We killed a lot of civilians in our bid to wipe out an evil ideology. Israel will feel that it doesn't want to kill civilians, but it will feel that it can get away with certain things in the name of wiping out a murderous organization, which Hamas is. Let's not make no mistakes about that. Let's remind ourselves uh, of what the Foreign Secretary James Cleverly had to say about this escalating tension. Yeah, images of, of, uh, of people being held, uh, images of bodies being desecrated are still sloshing around on social media. So, of course, they have every right, and we support this right, to protect themselves whilst doing it We've said, do everything you can to minimise civilian casualties, do everything you can to prevent Hamas getting what they want, which is this to escalate into a, a wider regional conflict. Uh, now, now, in the Gaza, of course, uh, there are women, there are children, there are hospitals, there are all sorts of places uh, that uh, should not be attacked, uh, but they inevitably will be. We're just looking at a hospital there, uh, right there in the middle of Gaza. Uh, why is it, Benedict, do you feel... I mean, hospitals always seem to become targets, don't they? Because ha uh, Hamas were firing rockets at, Israel at an Israeli children's yeah, hospital. I mean, Could couldn't we at least get both sides to agree? Leave the hospitals alone. I think very often in war you can get some agreement around hospitals. Not always, but you can. But the point about Hamas is they're not a legitimate government. They don't operate under the same rules uh, that the Israeli government do. Or, you know, you couldn't even compare them to the Russians or anything. Thing like that. Well, their, their objective is about murdering Jewish people. Yes. As far as they're concerned, hospitals are fantastic targets because <laughs> they know where everybody is, they know that they can't get out, and they know that by attacking them, they are reducing the means by which um, people can be treated, people can be rescued. If you hit the hospital first and then hit other people, well, then that's, that's happy days as far as they're concerned. And of course, then on the flip side, they recognize there is an emotive issue to around killing children, killing the innocent, killing the weak and the infirm, which is why they base their military installation underneath hospitals, because they know the Israelis will then have no choice but to target the hospitals. I'm told this is called the Kanyanis Hospital in uh, southern Gaza. Uh, but, you know, the Israelis uh, fired on a, a, a Gaza Gaza hospital last week, so mm. it seems to cut both ways. Uh, I, I, at the very least, I never understand why it's said there's all the calling on restraint and all this sort of stuff. Well, couldn't both sides agree not to target hospitals? As I said, I, I just think Hamas would never agree to it, or they might say they would and then they'd do it anyway. Yeah. But ultimately, I think what Western uh, viewers are seeing, and we've seen this in Ukraine as well, as much as people call on international human rights law, international rules around war, you're going to get a real wake-up call that actually the reality of the world is that this isn't what happens. The only way that things like international law makes any kind of a difference is if one side that breaks the laws are defeated, their leadership is captured and you can put them on trial. How often actually does that happen? Sometimes, very small states, like in the Balkans, but broadly speaking, that's not what happens. That's not going to happen to Putin in Russia. That's not going to happen here. This is what it, war is about. It's about brutality. Uh, we've also got uh, growing trouble in the north uh, where Lebanon, Hezbollah, another terrorist organization funded by Iran, uh, are making threatening sounds, threatening noises. They are firing rockets. And Israel have warned Hezbollah, don't go to war with us. Uh, you will suffer greatly 